Hello and welcome to another episode of What Travis Says. My name is Travis and I'm going to Arizona. More specifically, the 2017 Astrobiology Science Conference in Mesa, Arizona at the end of the month. Thanks to so many wonderful people in my life, we hit the $500 goal last night on the GoFundMe and so I emailed NASA and let them know that I'm coming. GoFundMe took their cut of the money because, I mean, I was using their services, which is to be expected, so I have a little less than $500 but I should still be able to make it work. But the funding page will still be up for the next couple days in case anyone else wants to chip in. Since we already reached the goal, the trip is happening. Any extra surplus of money would go towards equipment or supplies for the trip. I'm going to film a thank you video while I'm out there for everyone who donated, but if you want to get in on that thank you video, the link to donate is down below. So I said I emailed NASA last night, but after that, it was a bit of a stressful 12 hours. After reaching the goal, I purchased the plane ticket and the hotel on a credit card. Now in the acceptance email that NASA sent me, I needed to let them know by 10 a.m. today, Eastern Standard Time, if I was even able to go. I needed to confirm my spot because if I didn't confirm it in time, there was a huge waiting list of people waiting to take my spot. In the NASA email, there was a bit of fine print that said I was responsible in getting myself to Mesa. All travel expenses were my own. Or in the very tiny chance that they had to reschedule or even cancel the conference, I was on my own. Completely understandable. Also, understandable that they didn't pay my way to get out there because after checking the website for a student, which I'm not a student, but a student is the cheapest ticket, at the door, it's $600. For a professional at the door, it's upwards of $750. That's just for a two-day conference. That's just to get in. So NASA is pretty awesome for giving me press credentials to this thing. So NASA's email told me that I could reply to that email with my confirmation, or I could email this other email with my confirmation. Lots of emailing emails. There was lots of correspondence going on. So I replied to the email that they sent me so there wouldn't be any miscommunication or misspellings of emails. I just, I did it just to be safe. So then when I was booking my trip, I made sure to read their fine print as well. But when you're getting a deal like I did, companies aren't too keen on giving you your money back if you just decide to cancel. So we raise the money, I book my trip, I email NASA, and I wait. I, I wait for their response that they got my email. And it was a very stressful waiting period. I waited, and I waited, kind of getting a little nervous after the next couple hours because I just dropped hundreds of dollars on this trip, emailing them in time of the cutoff with my intent to go, and I was just waiting to hear back from them that they received my email. So it got to be 11 p.m., midnight, and I'm like, there's, there's no way that there's anybody even in the offices right now. Everyone's at home. I was trying to rationalize this to myself to keep me from stressing out. But at two in the morning after rereading NASA's email for the hundredth time, I remember that they gave me another email that I could email instead of just replying to the one like I did. They said in the email that either one was fine, but in my moment of panicking, I thought, Maybe, maybe I should email the other one too, just, just, just to make sure. But it was two in the morning. I didn't want NASA to think I was a crazy person sending another email at two in the morning as I sat there in my dark room, rocking back and forth, staring at my dimly lit phone screen. Look, if NASA didn't receive my confirmation and someone else was picked, I had a round trip ticket to Mesa for three days for what? I needed to make sure that I was going to this thing. In hindsight, I had record of my confirmation. I replied to the email that they emailed me with. It's not like I misspelled the email or anything. Everything should have been fine. Ugh, just reliving this stress is getting me all sweaty. Now the weird thing is, is that if the NASA official that I was corresponding with was in Arizona, there's a three hour time change, but they still wanted me to confirm my going by 10 in the morning Eastern Standard Time, so my time. So like the anxiety-driven coverer of bases that I am, I set an alarm for this morning for nine in the morning because I figure if they hadn't responded by then, I could always email the secondary email still before the deadline. I'm all thinky. So as 9 a.m. comes around, as I feared, no response from NASA. <laughs> but now that shouldn't have been a surprise because as I said before, there's a three hour time change. So 10 in the morning my time is seven in the morning their time. Nine in the morning my time, it's six. It's six in Arizona. Nobody's gonna be up emailing people about a conference. So it's understandable that they would have not emailed me back yet. There's no problem, I should just stop worrying. And then I emailed the secondary email address. I know, I know, I didn't want to seem like that guy that's super eager for a first date, but I wanted to at least know from NASA if the date was going to happen, 
because I already spent a couple hundred dollars on it. Funny thing was, right after I emailed the secondary email address, I got a message back like 20 minutes later saying, cool, glad you're coming. I mean, in so many words, it was, it was NASA official. They didn't say like, cool. Travis, cool Travis, I don't know what. So I'm really excited for this trip and I need to start preparing now because it's at the end of the month. It's like just over 10 days away. And as you know, I upload videos on the weekdays. So when I fly out there on a Sunday, I'm not gonna have to worry about a video, but then the conference is on Monday and Tuesday. So I'll have to figure something out then. Maybe there'll be like airport vlog type things. I will still be uploading every weekday. You just might get a few travel vlogs that week. And if I do a big overall astrobiology science conference video, that will probably be a monster of a video to edit. So I'll probably edit and then post that the following week. But if you follow me on Snapchat, I will be uploading things more frequently on there, especially during the trip so you can share my experiences in real time. I'm honestly not entirely sure what to expect. I hope to meet some really cool people, see some amazing things, and share my experiences with you guys. Is there anything specific that you want to see? Any certain style? Anything that you want me to focus on? In the back of my mind, I'm thinking I should do just something Doctor Who related because it's NASA and space and I should, you know, maybe bring along a little mini TARDIS for a photo shoot or something. I don't, I don't know. I'm just, I'm rattling around with all of these ideas in my head and I want you to give me some ideas to figure out what I should actually do for content because there, this conference is only two days. San Diego Comic-Con is five days and each day you can do something different. You can focus on taking pictures, focus on taking video, focus on specific things. But this conference, it, it's just two days from like 7.30 in the morning until nine at night, Monday and Tuesday, and then it's over. And I need to have everything with me. I need to be very prepared on what I'm going to do, but at the same time, have no idea what I'm going to be experiencing. So it's a lot all at once going on inside my head. And once again, I wanna give a massive thank you to all of the people who are helping me get out to Arizona at the end of the month to be able to do this. It's a fantastic opportunity and I'm super excited. As always, my name is Travis. Thank you for listening to what I have to say, and you will see me tomorrow.